Do I look like a fucking lady or what? Talk to a bitch in here. Come on. I am happy to be here, y'all. For real, I'm so glad to fucking be here. I was backstage cold, so I had my jacket on. A little drafty in here. But of course, a dumb bitch had to come messing with me. <laughs> Talk about why you got your coat on. I said two reasons, bitch. One, cause it's mine, and B, cause I'm cold, bitch. She talking about, you from Chicago, you ought to be used to the cold. I said, yeah, well, Richard Pryor been burned up, but I bet you his ass ain't used to fire. <laughs> Light his ass up, I bet you he gonna scream like it's his first goddamn time. Some shit a bitch just can't get used to, you know? Like dumb shit. People always say stupid shit. Like when I was scared to fly, they always tell me, girl, flying is the safest way to trap. Besides, when it's your time, you gotta go. I'm like, yeah, well, what if it's the bitch sitting next to me time? I gotta leave because this whole number is up. You know, it ain't like I'm gonna jump up out the wreckage and go, ooh, damn, I'm glad it was that bitch time. Now, what y'all do with my luggage? I ain't got time for dumb shit. Life is too short, y'all. I swear, I believe we're living in our last days. I believe what my grandma said. We're living in our last days. We got clues. The sniper was a black man. Is that not a clue for your ass? The sniper was a black man. He fucked everybody up, didn't he? Because America was profiling they ass off. They wasn't looking for nothing black. They was looking for the total opposite. They was looking for a white man in a white van with a white shirt on named Mr. White. You know they were. But when they found this bastard, he was totally the opposite. It was a black man with a black friend. They were shooting out a black hole and his name was Muhammad. Ain't that fucked up? The sniper was a black man. They tricked every fucking body. Didn't nobody know they was black but me. <laughs> oh, they had me at first, cause you know, it, it was a serial killer. I thought they was white too, but then they dropped a major clue. You know when I figured out they was black? When they asked for money. <laughs> you ain't never heard a serial killer in the history of fucking serial killers ask for no goddamn money. Think about it, Ted Bundy didn't ask for shit. John Wayne Gacy didn't ask for shit. Hell, all Jeffrey Dahmer wanted was something to eat. <laughs> but as soon as a brother joined the ranks of the shit, this bastard gotta have $10 million on a credit card. As Soon as I heard that, I said, oh shit, that's somebody black. Hell, that might be my mama. Let me call and make sure she ain't on the East Coast. They posted those bastards up on TV every single day and blamed every fucking shooting that ever happened on those two motherfuckers. With good reason, cause they were shooting everything. You found out later they were shooting tree stumps in Washington, liquor clo clerks in Alabama. Hell, I turned on TV one day, they said the Tupac and Biggie murders might have been the work of the snipers. <laughs> Y'all better have fun, cause I, I'm telling you, you're living in your last days right now. You better have fun today. See, I, I think of my grandmama a lot now, cause see, she said we was living in our last days. I believe that shit now. She was a different kind of lady. If anybody here got a grandma, my grandma was 92 years old when she left here. And if she didn't drop some wisdom on this bitch before she left, I ain't sitting here. And different, you know, they was discreet back then. Like if she was sending somebody some money, your ass was gonna take the money to them, but you wasn't gonna know what's in the package. See, she get a plain little piece of paper and fold the money up into the paper and give it to you and say, here, baby, take this package down to Miss Louise. You'll be looking at it like, package or what? Anthrax? What the fuck is in this little paper? And my grandma was so good at talking over our heads. If she saw a man that was gay and she wanted to say it to my mama and the kids was around, she didn't want you to know what she was talking about. You know what she would say? She said, that boy, that got a dirty shirt. We'd be like, uh-uh, Grandma, his shirt is clean. she said, say, oh, baby, trust if Grandma say he got a dirty shirt, his ass got a dirty shirt. <laughs> For years, I could not figure out the connection. How in the hell do you figure a man got a dirty shirt? I realized she was talking about gay men when I thought about some of the men she said it about. 
Like a long time ago, she said, Johnny Mathis, that boy got a dirty shirt. A long time ago, she looked at Elton John, she said, that boy there got a dirty shirt. A long time ago, she looked at Little Richard and said, that motherfucker got ring around the collar. <laughs> and I still didn't get the connection. You know, I didn't understand what does being a homosexual man have to do with you having a dirty shirt. Even when I got older and started sucking dick myself, couldn't quite understand how you can figure out he got a dirty shirt from being a gay man. Yeah, when I would be sucking a dick, I would be getting visuals, trying to understand what grandma was talking about. I'd be like, well, how do they get a dirty shirt? What, are they giving somebody a blowjob and the nuts is long and bang on their chest and leave it a stain? And if that's the case, can't they get a bib and keep their secret safe, you know? I love my grandma, she wasn't lying. Y'all, we living in our last days. September 11th, that was a clue, we living in our last days. I was scared at first, but then I got mad. I said, fuck that, I am now a COP. That's a citizen on patrol. That mean I watch your ass now. I don't give a fuck who you are and how your feelings hurt, bitch, I'm looking at you. Before September 11, if I was in the airport staring at somebody and it looked like they was uncomfortable, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to make you uncomfortable, so I turned my head. But after September 11, I will stare at your ass like I'm Mike Tyson and bitch, your ears look delicious. Fuck that. Cause that was some scary shit and it's a good thing I don't work for the airlines cause they'd have discrimination suits all over the place. They would swear I'm discriminating. Not that I would, I'm a black woman. That would be some twisted shit to do. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're Arab, Indian, or Muslim and bitch, you wearing that traditional garb, them sheets and shit, you ain't flying today. <laughs> 